Hey now, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the show. I am Simple Jack from Nation 30. Today, we are going to discuss failed mergers. Uh, I think everybody has seen or been a part of something like that. So we're going to go around the room and uh, kind of collectively take a look at some of the stories. Uh, Before we get into it, let me introduce who we've got here today. We've got Kitchy, Lumberg, and Maddie D. Um, So let me go ahead and just kind of set the stage. So failed mergers, it can be kind of subjective. We really, uh, you know, as as everybody knows, as mergers happen as a, as a nation kind of starts to have low activity, you get a group, maybe two, three, or even four nations come together. The uh, excitement, the anticipation, you know, you get the activity level back up, and everyone's able to start to compete with the uh, uh, cross nation events. And, and start to be competitive again. So uh, the way that I particularly measure a failed merger is after you have a merge and you have that enthusiasm, you still struggle with some of the events in the cross nation uh, events. So uh, let's kind of go around the room. I know that uh, Lumberg just started his merge and Maddie has a merge as well, but he's got some stories from some of the, uh, other nations that he's worked closely with. Maddie, do you want to kind of dig into some of that right now? You up there, Maddie? Oh, can you hear me? Yep. All right. Sorry. Uh, yeah. So the 500s just got, you know, a ton of merges and, you know, the vast majority of them were pretty rough. Um, to say the least, we were expecting to have quite a few little mega nations out of the deal. And, you know, they they all kind of fizzled out. Um, one nation in particular was 581, which everybody knows Big Boss. He was that kind of that original. I don't I wouldn't say original, but he, he was the one that went really excessive in the 500s with that ridiculous battle power level. So everybody kind of knew who he was. That's right. Um, and, I remember that. So that guy just totally left the game. Is that right? Yeah. What happened is, is uh, it was about a month before merger. Some personal stuff came up and, you know, he kind of stopped playing the game for the most part. But that nation also had two very, very strong other C-38s. Uh, one of them was Boss 2, which was his buddy. Uh, it was a melee city. And then there was a, a guy named Punisher who was a really strong C-38. And, you know, Boss kind of left. They got a very favorable merge uh, with, let's see, two, or 569 and 571. And they picked up a couple other really strong C-38s. And on paper, looking at them, it, we were like, well, okay, this is, this is a really, really scary nation, you know. Um, and, and Trash Panda, who is now the R5 of, of kind of the nation and that main alliance, uh, gave me a little write up and basically said, you know, broke down kind of what happened. It all really started with Boss leaving because there was just a lot of hype around that player. And the pre merger talks were pretty civil, they were really easy. You know, they decided that, you know, the nation they were going to go to. That was really easy. The map was divided up. Everything was just looking perfect. All the big spenders and the most active players would go to the the main alliance as they should to be contenders in every event. Um, you know, th- there was no. They didn't put any kind of limitations on the number of farms in the nation as long as the T4 rules were enforced. So it seems like it was going to be very, very peaceful. Um, one thing they did do is say. We're only going to allow three top alliances. Everybody else is going to be a farm. Um, And (laughs) that may have been part of their downfall as well, because when you merge three nations worth of people, you get, they're not all going to fit into three alliances. Yeah. Um, But he said the first issue was uh, the pre-merge and in the talking phase, a rogue, a rogue alliance really didn't like any of the rules and the number of R4 positions they were going to get, and they just kept wanting more and more out of the deal. Um, you know, and they they branched off 
at the very beginning of the physical merge. And that just caused all kinds of territory issues because they had already divided up the map. And it was at that point, that's when the fighting began and the whole nation just went into civil war and it continued for months. And, you know, people were just zeroed on all sides aside from their, their strongest cities. So let me stop you real quick. So what you're telling me is, uh, at the onset of the merge, they decided they wanted to have one alliance and then everybody else was a farm? No, no, that they wanted three alliances. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Three, three total. But yeah. we, whenever you're doing, you know, three nations worth of people, that's yeah. a lot more than three alliances. Yeah. And, and just my nation in particular, we, we started out with five and we quickly realized we needed a sixth for those overflow people. So, so you know, one of the things that uh, we'll probably hear a lot about, and um, as we go around the room, one of the biggest issues that I think uh, makes a, a a merger fail is are the egos, right? So, did you see or hear about any of the egos that was going on? What nation was that again? Five eighty one. It's five eighty one. Yeah. 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 There's um, the egos generally are from the top players, and their very tip top players were all on board. It was, you know, their their C thirty fours and lower that were really given the issues. Uh, so it really was kind of a re- revolt versus an ego, because the way that I always see an ego screwing everything up is uh, when you have, like, take for instance one of those top three alliances, and one of the three didn't really like the way it was situated, so they constantly push against the grain and constantly make issues for everybody else. So. That's typically the way I see it. Yeah, and then they started off being very accommodating to farmers and stuff, and and they have because they just had so many whales, um, you know that they allowed RSS dealers and whatnot, and you know they had friends, and that just caused a lot of issues when they started getting rid of RSS sellers, um, and and basically because things started falling apart. You know, all of their big spenders are super competitive with a little bit of splash of narcissism. And that that's in trash pain as words. You know, they hate losing. They get extremely frustrated and they just kind of give up. Wow. And right and right now, you know, trash pain is still around. Um, boss two kind of plays. Boss one's completely gone. Um, Punisher, who was their other big guy he plays but i don't really see him too much in their rankings anymore so it's what their thing is now is like okay this merger was trash let's just focus on the next one and it seems really early for them to be doing that but i think that that's giving them a little sense of hope you know that maybe the next time will be better but as we all know it, it's a crapshoot, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, I never knew exactly how mergers come, came about, but um, I know that, I, and I don't know if it's because of the way natural attrition happens, but it takes time. If you get a, if you get a recent merge, I would not expect another one for at least eight months. And, you know, we, Nation 30, we're already over a year and a half without a merge. So, you know, we've been aching for one. And uh, from what I hear, you know, it's still a ways away. So we're, we're actually trying to change that. But uh, I wouldn't think that anybody would get a merge within eight months of their previous merge. But I don't know, Lumberg, have you seen anything like that where people get merged? Well, aside from the Lock Nations? I would say it's pretty rare to get a merge before a year, right? So, you know, a lot of this data is, you know, it depends on what nation, but it's, it's really, you're looking at, if you've just got a merger and you're hoping for another one, you're stuck with it for at least a year, I'd say. So I'd go even beyond your estimate of eight months. <laughs> yeah. I, and, and, you know, I agree with that completely. Um, I guess it really just depends on, how much you murder your nation because if you if you get your nation and down and just constantly kill everybody and your bp is really low they may make an exception i don't know i've never heard of it happening but 
they did get a favorable merger from the beginning and essentially got to pick one nation. So y- you never know with these guys that they may do it to try to lure, you know, boss back to the game or something like that, that they could use that as leverage and say, Hey, you know, he's not playing. He's mad. There's no merge merge us again. Yeah. I know uh, from talking to some VIP reps that, uh, unique characters do play a part, right? So, uh, Big Boss or whatever his name is, he he would definitely be a unique character if he drops out. I mean, I'm not going to say that's the that's the end all be all for uh, another d- determination for a merger, but it's definitely a factor when um, a nation loses some big big whales. Um, it's gonna it's gonna be somewhat of a factor, I think. Yeah, and, and and Boss was actually funding the Boss Two City, so he was he was double buying the store. Wow, wow, interesting. So, so Lumber- I, I oh, sorry, I could see them getting a little preferential treatment, but you know, only time will tell. <laughs> yeah, Lumberg, uh, fill us in. How's your your nation merge going? I see that you. World 285 is uh, doing extremely well in Global Conquest, so I'm interested to hear how you guys are doing. Yeah, I'd, I'd be happy to share. So, you know, I'll, I'll give some, some of my thoughts. And I, I would say, you know, going through this merger and, you know, spending many hours and kind of just, you know, negotiating and talking to the other leaders to kind of get, you know, just common ground, trust established, I would say that everybody is basically just one out of um, out of control conversation or argument away from a bad merger, right? So I will set the stage with that. You know, so a lot of it is, it's almost like you have to kind of put above everything else, like, let's not have an early conflict, like, despite, you know, how much you might hate the other person, hate his guts, hate her guts, you know, you really have to put that aside and, and put egos aside, which is difficult, because this is a game that Let's face it, it attracts egos, right? Uh, Camel monetizes, advertises it for people that really want to be number one. We all want to win, right? I love winning. Like, oh, we're, we're on top of GC, right? It won't last. Come on, let's, let's not kid ourselves. But everybody likes that feeling. And, you know, things are good when your nation's doing good. When your nation's not doing good, guess what happens? You know, every, you could just be one step away from a bad merger. So I'll give a little bit of context for us. You know, so so we had, you know, three different nations merge in. Each one did things differently, right? So just getting used to rules is tough. If you've played by a certain set of rules for over a year or two years, you're used to that set of rules and anything different. I mean, we are, most of the people, the average age of the person that plays this game is actually pretty older. Like it's not a game that attracts a lot of young people because it needs a lot of spending and older people have money. Um, if I get too preachy, feel free to interrupt me at any point in time. <laughs> it's all good. You know. I don't think that stopped you guys in the past. So, but you know, so what usually happens is people don't like that change and they revolt. And you know, you you don't really need to pay attention to nation chat. I would say if you're close to a bad merger, if you fail a merger, just turn off nation chat because that's just a sounding board for anybody or any troll. And really, don't pay attention to to cities that that don't um, say what they want to say from their own city, right? Because if you're, if you're confident about what you want to say, don't make it anonymous. Don't create a farm, a level 10 farm, a level 12 farm, and don't, then go rant. So just turning that off might be helpful in, in having a healthier merge. I'm going to give a little bit of um, context into our merge. So, you know, we, we had our merge. Um, we had many talks. I mean, I got on a conference call with a couple of the other leaders, and it took some time to build that trust. And and you have to be forgiving of, of of mistakes. Everybody made mistakes against the void versus 52 that we had. We almost won it, but we lost. We could have imploded, right? We could have started pointing fingers that, hey, look, if you didn't do this battle, we would have won. And we, we, we stopped doing that. And honestly, the best way that I could do that is I just stepped away from the game for a week. So that made it easier. You know, time heals all wounds. If it gets bad, just walk away. Um, and then, you know, we kind of came back and, uh, um, and you know, made, uh, made a show of it in um, Global Conquest, right? So now we're back to winning. Things are good again, and we'll get along. Do we solve our problems? Absolutely not. Will we have more problems? Yes. But, you know, um, I will share one story. But before I do that, I'll let somebody else comment. I'm good. I'm good. 
So I was talking about, I think um, you guys may have known that, you know, um, 255, which merged a little bit sooner than us, they just, I'm not giving away any confidential information here, but I think they had, uh, there was some drama around that merge, you know, different VIPs requesting different nations and kind of crossing hairs and, uh, and, and really they ended up getting what may be, uh, it's subjective, but maybe perceived as a less favorable merge than some of the other combinations. And, um, you know, I think shortly after that, there was a civil war. So that went from a, you know, potentially bad merger based on the length of the time of the civil war. I think they ended the civil war. So to me, that one month time um, is the perfect kind of length of a civil war to establish the pecking order, to establish that, okay, we've, we've fought it out. Uh, we realized who we need to listen to, and then let's move on and get back together again, right? So, so to me, if you are going to have a um, a, a civil war, you know, make it quick, um, fast, and then get back on track. So that would be my other piece of kind of story from two fifty five. I think that's the you 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 cut the fat and you get back on track. So that's what are your thoughts on what? If you are going to have a failed merger and how you recover from it, what is the appropriate length of civil war? What is the appropriate length to carry on a civil war? Yes. So, uh, in our thoughts, you know, if you're if you're ready for a merge, you might as well civil war on because um, you need to trim the nation, anyways, right? You need to kind of work through a lot of, you know. I'm just speaking from Nation 30. So uh, over time, and this is like a year and six months, there's a lot of pent up frustration between alliances. They still work together and, you know, there's still a lot of success there. But over time, there's so much pent up uh, frustration because everybody does things differently that you naturally go to war. And we're actually in a civil war right now um, and it's getting pretty good. But, um, now that we're in that phase where we've already accepted, look, we, we need to just have our merge. We need to, um, you know, concentrate on, uh, lowering our BP. Um, we, we, we don't try to really stop any kind of civil war right now, but if we were still super competitive, then that's when we would say, look, you know, we, we need to put this aside and we need to keep going forward. But, uh, uh so I think it depends, but in our, instance where we've been ready for a merge for a few months now. Um, so, you know, we, we don't try to put a brakes on anything. So your goal really isn't, it isn't so much as a um, civil war, as in a civil, um, you know, exercise program to get rid of fat. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're going to, we're going to let everybody kill everybody because let's face it in a civil war, usually what happens is are, are the people that, can't shield or can't afford a shield or um, just aren't active enough to shield, they're the ones that get killed, right? So in a lot of ways, that's kind of what you want anyway. So because in our opinion, what you want to do when you prepare for a merge is you get a core of your heavy spenders, your heavily active players, protect them, and then just start purging the rest. Yeah, you, your goal for so civil war is, I mean, honestly, to make players quit. Yeah, I mean, so so that's how long it should last until they quit. Now, if you guys can come to an agreement and say, okay, we'll bring you into the fold, then it can end. But if they're not going to get on board, you know, you just keep killing. Yeah, and that's where you start to run into a lot of the egos because. What will happen, and this is happening in our nation, where when you do allow all that killing to go on, all the guys that are really the bad guys in your nation, they're going to be martyrs. They're going to be the guys that say, I'm here protecting the farmers. I'm the one who cares about you guys, um, you know, the whoever the, the aggressor is. Um, they're the bad guys that are just trying to not let you play your game and all that stuff. So you really see an interesting dynamic that you it's 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 if you can avoid it that would be good but usually that's the role that the bad guys in the nation take up hey i see we got johnny ringo here welcome hola hola how's it going yeah yeah 
Yeah, Maddie brought me here. Uh, it was good, man. It was good. We just came off a uh, a good little round of uh, our third for uh, Global, and it was good. Um, but now I was talking to Maddie the other night about a merger because I kind of had a weird one, uh, but a good one uh, myself. And um, <clears throat> I definitely agree with a lot of things y'all are saying and have said before, especially when it comes to mergers. Um, like, so I started off in 386. And we had this one guy who I won't even mention his name. He, you know, quit and left to another world. And now he's doing it there. Um, and he's going to expect the same results. Um, but I think whenever it comes to like, you know, killing players that basically just can't cut the mustard. And that's kind of what we all, um, you know, talk towards whenever we're saying, hey, you know, if we're going to merge for this or merge for that, you know, what's your what's your helping hand going to be you know and some of it can be very little some of it could be very small like we just did i stole something from matt's playbook the other night and uh i never thought about just because i don't pay attention to it that much but i was just like hey why don't we just get all these farmers to turn off their equipment and this that and the other you know and their titans and um there are not the titans but there are the zombies and stuff like in our farm and um uh, you know and that and that happened overnight um but you know, we had this guy who was a really, really huge spender. Uh, you know, he was a, a RAM equivalent, if you will. And uh, and he just kind of like smoked out a bunch of people. And then we got merged. Uh, whenever the merger was announced, I looked out and saw like who was making the most effort to kind of create something like a new good group. Uh, you know, and it was Barry. And uh, I reached out to him and I was like, hey, uh, I've got, you know, myself and two other people we want to do this and uh he's like, all right cool you know and we did that and obviously we you know we merged and you know i'm with day now um and we've been doing you know really good ever since then <clears throat> but then you kind of get to that uh, that weird um you know brick wall of conversation or agreement uh of cooperation if you will and uh we finally kind of um got over that and was able to coordinate some stuff for global uh in the two alliances the two main alliances in you know 385 of night and uh for global and it turned out like really really well um and uh and before we did that probably maybe about like two or three months ago you know we did have like this big you know argument where one player did this one thing and it was kind of like this stalemate between like the two big alliances uh with each other and we kind of had like a I, I wouldn't call it like a civil war. I'd call it like a couple of SOS throws, if you will, back and forth. Um, but it was able to be able to uh, like calm down and, um, you know, resolve very quickly because it was just like, okay, cool. What are we, what are we going to do? We're, we're going to do this. We're going to do that. Like, you know, um, and I think, you know, the leaders of both alliances kind of saw, you know, hey, if we do it this way, then it's just going to create this type of nation. And we're not trying to do that. And then it kind of came to like a, a weird like Mexican standoff, you know, for for the better, if you will, um, you know, but but yeah, you know, to be honest, like, you know, and then whenever, uh, you know, you are trying to kill off players like Matt saying, it's like, you know, it, it it sucks at times, but like, you know, it's to what everybody says, like it, it is a game um, and it is a pay, play to play game like. If they can't do it to a certain extent, then you know they they can't do it at all, um, and should just hang it up. I mean, I've I know myself and other players in my alliance have you know not a huge amount, but you know given some coins and whatnot to players in our alliance who are free to play, um, and they're still around and because they're active and void and whatnot. But uh, you know, yeah, you you can't keep friends around forever and 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 expect a an effective nation uh at such a scale you know yeah so three, I, I, 385 I, started off I, split, I just right? very thing. go ahead man. yeah 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 we, we 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 did yeah so one of the biggest things that i found is a problem you know as you go through this and i'm interested to hear johnny what uh, how well the communication is with the uh with all the leaders amongst the different alliances but one of the biggest issues that I've found that 
usually leads to a failed merge is you have to put that cutoff line for players and you have to basically tell a specific group of players you're basically useless, right? You're not like in Nation 30, if your long range is less than a thousand, you're pretty much a farm. So, uh, telling players, cause you know, getting to a thousand long range is not always easy. And you've got those, uh, fringe players that are, you know, that are effective, but they can't quite reach that. So it's difficult to get that cutoff point to where you're useful and you're, you know, the nation wants to keep you around. And as soon as you start to go into specific groups and tell them, Hey guys, um, you know, it was fun. You might want to look at going into some newer worlds or something, but, uh, you guys, you guys are just showing up every day and just, uh, logging into farm and it's, you know, it's killing our nation. But, um, uh, Johnny, I'm interested to hear what, uh, what kind of, uh, talks did your leaders have? Do they have good conversations in that nation? Yeah, I mean, no, I, I, I think they did. Um, you know, and I, I definitely don't want to take anything away from Barry since he's not here I, I i believe he is heading back oh, into work right. right now but Very. you know because like i said we just got off round three um you know um but i do know like he, I, i've never seen somebody like so active and proactive if you will in a merger talk and then post merger if you will you know um and of course you know out of a thousand good ideas <clears throat> you know you're gonna have 999 people that don't like your ideas and uh, you know, I mean, he's 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 a very you know reasonable person amongst a bunch of other you know leaders in our alliance, you know. And um, I think a lot of it was maybe the intensity that we wanted to do, uh, like you know, hey, this person sucks, boot him out, you know, type of thing. <laughs> you know, not saying like that's what he wanted to do, but it was basically just like, hey, let's make a super alliance. We can definitely do this, you know. Um, and then the other part, you know, you kind of have the, um, cause in our other, you know, uh, sister alliance, if you will, is, uh, it's a lot of, you know, Korean people, Japanese and Chinese people. Um, and so then you have like, you know, the dialogue, the context, um, you know, the language barrier, you know, everything. So then you kind of have to like fight through all that. And, uh, the only footing, that I had to stand on in that was because some of these people um, I helped with our previous nation, you know, because of some said guy, if you will. Um, but, you know, but no, like, you know, Barry, Barry hustled his ass off. And I think, you know, he just at a point kind of just got like tired and was like, you know, Hey, if y'all want something, let me know. Um, you know, he did make every effort to, you know, like our first global, uh, you know, like Woody's here, you know, he definitely remembers uh, whenever, you know, they wanted to kind of take a break uh, for, you know, pre their merger. And Ram was like, hey, we'll do this. Like, bro, we 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 showed up as a as a, an alliance. I don't know how many other people were there from other alliances, but we showed up as day and uh, Ram, you know, smoked us in global. And we were like, this is trash, dude, this is garbage, you know. But if we would have done it with, you know, a few other people from other alliances, uh, from the merch, then we would have done a lot better, you know, yeah, when lose draw, maybe, you know, definitely would have been different, but, uh, you know, it, just, it, 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 it takes a lot of patience. And I, and I think, and I think what's working in our favor now is that kind of maybe everybody sees like the writing on the wall as well as, you know, Hey, we're not, it's like just hitting your players, you know, just for no reason. Um, and we're actually just trying to do good and trying to win. And also some of their players are, you know, just quitting, you know, because they're tired of non-movement, if you will. You know, like, hey, if I'm in this alliance and our leaders are not making moves, we're going to quit, you know. Um, so that's kind of what's happening right now, you know. But but no, like, like you know, as far as coordination and effort and, um, you know, lining things up, I mean, you know, Barry and his group, you know, pre-merge, you know, I've, I've, I've never seen a better effort, you know? Yeah. I've heard and, that. Uh, uh, and, and, and we did have a couple of, you know, a couple of days or whatnot that, you know, like, Hey, we, you know, we bubbled because of this, that, and the other, 
you know, I heard that Barry but, is taking control of that. So that's good. Good, good on Barry. Hey, Kitchy, I, I, I heard you had some stories. You want to share some of them? Regarding failed merge. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, uh, the merge that I went through was 320, 310, and 297. And that were, that was, March last year, I believe, and same same as others, as we've all heard. Like the the first few months, they're all sweet, and you know everyone's cooperative, and everyone wants to make it work, and everyone's excited, and um, there's an influx of active players again. So you know, doing events are awesome, but. I, I think the issue, the issue that I found um, that I I couldn't actually wrap my head around was the the we had different ideologies, if you can say that. Like we, like like in three ten, we we wanted we had all farms T four and below, but the other nations they didn't do that. So coming into a merge like that with two other nations that didn't believe in T4 below farms, it was really hard because the pushback was harder because it's two nations against one. So we found, I found that an issue at the start. And then the communication barriers, um, how they communicated within their alliance, how we communicated within um our nation as well was different they communicated in um in game because there's a translator we communicated outside of the game through discord but that's also because we had a translator there so just differences in communication styles as well that was that, that was not pleasant so i i can't say that it's a failed merge with 320 because i left before I couldn't take the differences in opinions, so I left before they actually they actually failed. So what, from what I'm hearing, what you're saying at the top starting, alliances is that nobody could agree on how to kind of move forward. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah. So top one and top two alliances had differences in opinions with how to enforce rules, like. You know, they agree to certain rules, and then when it comes to enforcing them, they can't enforce them. And when some other alliances enforced them, then they were up at arms. It's like, it, but we discussed it, and you agreed to it. So I don't know where the issue is coming from. So it's just back and forth like that, that every day for months, it was, it was just painful. So how are they doing <laughs> now? Um, from what I heard, they've, they've lost, I think, void, two voids or one void, one frenzy. They're still doing great in the global conquest, but again, it, de it depends on which nations you're paired with. But, uh, from what I've heard, they have internal turmoil, but I've always had internal turmoil when I was there between one and two. It's like, it's not an actual civil war, but it's more like a cold war. And you know that one person who just does one mistake and it's all out civil war. So <clears throat> like if, if they can make it work between themselves, then kudos to them. But I, I can't, I, I, yeah, <laughs> I gave that up. Yeah. yeah I, I I think you and Lumberg both said it like, you know, you're one comment or one fight away from, you yeah. know, everything blowing up. And yeah. for, for my merger in particular, that petrifies me just because of all the effort that I've put in. <laughs> and our nation right now is at complete peace. Nobody's mm. fighting. Nobody's arguing. And I'm just waiting on Archduke Ferdinand to get assassinated. <laughs> and it all come crashing down. 
Yeah. I, I think that's that that comes through. I don't know. I I think it's in, it's in all relationships, even in games. Like you get that nice honeymoon period where everything you know everything is flowing. You're agreeing with each other. You want to compromise to make it work, but you know the quirks that you liked about other alliances over time they become irritation. So it's like ah oh, okay, it's like it's that again. So. And between language barriers, um, communication styles, it's it's just too much work. Oh, it's a lot of work. Um, you know, mm. I, it, it, the the translation with certain languages is is really rough. And mm. I, I'll apologize to a lot of Russian players um, simply because what they post in Nation Chat does not translate well, and it makes me want to smack the crap out of them. <laughs> and <laughs> and it, it's not their fault. You know, I've actually had somebody. Physically. Yeah, no, <laughs> physically. Yeah. And and I've had somebody like, you know, I'll paste them the the actual text and they'll they'll translate it, you know, themselves instead of going through the automatic translator. And it's a completely different meaning. And I'm like, how many people did I burn because the translator sucks? <laughs> like, I, I, I do well, I feel think... bad. <laughs> I think, and, and you know, so, um, from from uh, from what I've heard from other players, like um, from three fifty seven, uh, there are certain translations, like emoji translations, that if you put an emoji when it translates to another language, it means something else. So that supposedly starts. Civil wars, especially with non-English speaking players. So I don't know if it's true, but that's what but that's what I've heard before. Yeah, that's awesome. Mm. Hey Woody, so what are the stories? Yeah, I, I, oh, sorry. I think sorry go, ahead. go ahead. I was just gonna introduce now you, Woody. Now you go ahead. Now you go ahead. What's going on with three seventy three? I think uh, Woody's at work, so he's just listening in. He may oh, not okay. be able to gotcha. comment. Gotcha. Um, okay, go ahead, Joe. I'm gonna I'm gonna add in with the Woody. Couple. Oh, sorry, Woody's go ahead. Like, there's no gift here. Somebody drop. <laughs> uh, but no, yeah, with like the language thing, I definitely think that's a that's a thing. Um, gotcha. Hold on one second. Sorry. Okay. I'm back on. Um, but no, yeah, definitely. Uh, whenever you um, you know converse with somebody, you know, of a you know you know Korean, Asian, you know Chinese, Japanese, um, there's definitely a thing there because, like, you know, their context um, and their you know verbs, things like that. Like, they don't use them, you know, the way we do. So. Um, it's it's horrible with communication. Not always bad, not always good. Um, but you know, um, you 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 definitely got to put some legwork in there. I mean, I've got I've got some that you know I've been playing with for you know two or three years now. Um, I, I I think I've been playing for at least two, maybe three. I don't know. But um, and I've had to kind of finally envelop into you know, hey, we'll we'll do this uh, translate app. You know, whichever it be, whether it be Viber. Uh, you know, or a line app. Um, and even then, sometimes still, you know, there's still a gap there because, like I said, like, you know, they're, they're verge, uh, verbs, adjectives, things like that. Like, they're, they're, they don't use them the same, way do, wait, the same way we do. So it's crazy to communicate. But if they think you and, and or remember you're a nice person, they're going to be like, okay, cool. You know, yeah. Yeah. this guy's cool. We'll help him if it makes sense, you know. So gotcha. it's a, it's a, it's definitely a patience game with some of them, you know. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta, you gotta make sure that you uh, work the room and keep everybody happy. I, I definitely hear that. Lumberg, you said you wanted to add something. Yeah. Yes, I. Um, it's time for me to get preachy again, but I, I'm going to share a couple of things. So, Johnny, you mentioned that global 
um, you know, went well. I think if you're close to or in the middle of a failed merger or, you know, a, a, a bad merger, global is a great way to kind of, you know, call a truce, um, you know, have a common enemy and just go and wreck stuff, right? So if you can kind of coordinate and bring people together in global, that's a great way to kind of build up that camaraderie. I'm going to share a couple of thoughts on, you know, the communication and just the different um different languages and the different cultures in this in this game so right there's there's a couple of predominant um alliances just based on you know if you've played this game for a couple of months you'll you'll figure that out but one of the things that i think is really important like if you're trying to get out of the vicious cycle of of bad merger or not willing to work with each other you really need to kind of try to form an international alliance and that idea is it, you're it's not going to solve itself in the next merger right so if you think about it People that will speak the same language will normally gravitate towards each other. So if you are already have bad feelings, let's say towards a, another alliance where you can't communicate because of language, that's going to continue even into the new merger, right? So some of the ways that you can kind of do that is is really by some of these other apps and bringing in some people and some some moderators and some in between diplomats, if you will. And that's really what we found success in is that when we try to let's say this this. This um, podcast is predominantly English speaking, right? So you're not going to get um, all of us have a similar mindset because we speak the same language. But really, if you find out, I mean, find things to unite it. So we we're united by by our common sense of perversion, right? So we're an alliance of perverts, right? So that's universal. Uh, there's Japanese perverts, there's Korean perverts, right? So we joke around, we kid around. So <laughs> there there are things that you'll find out that you're more similar, but you really have to get past that barrier. Which is tough to do once you're already in that that format, but almost I feel like this game is all all about mediation, right? So if you can do mediation and conflict resolution, you will be successful in this game. It is critical to your nation as a success to do mediation. Yeah, uh, Lumber, can I ask you? You know, on your nation was was pretty well like an old, well oiled machine before a merger. But the other two nations, you said that they were in civil war. After they merged with you guys, didn't you kind of broker, you know, some deals and kind of, I don't want to say fix their nation, but you you had two nations that were at civil war, but you managed to bring them all together. Well, no, I don't want to take too much credit. So they they um, they fixed their civil war. Uh, even before we merged, right? Okay. Uh, what remained is some bad feelings, right? So the problem with those bad feelings is those remain, and you know the uh, the new world that 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 you know we want to create kind of gets past that. Our world motto is that you put you know uh, alliance over self and nation over alliance, but that's difficult to do, you know, if if you have bad feelings like serious bad feelings towards these other people, right? So you know there there is still some some issues that will continue, but you want to kind of work around those and just try to find what is more important to go around that, right? So, um, you know, there, there's still some conflict, there's still some animosity, but, you know, um, that will continue. But I think the best thing is, you know, people will like to win, right? So if you can get everybody together on the same page and win, you'll, you'll get past that and time heals all. So I'll say that again, like if you can just keep them apart from a little bit, they will stop hating each other. Yeah, one of the things that I noticed is, uh, like, when you go into a merge, our world, World 30, had four worlds come together. And I knew right off the bat, there was one world, I won't mention them, but they they always had civil war. And you can bet that after our merge, you know, 99% of our current civil wars are because of that one world. It's like, if you have a world that comes in that has poor leadership, their first inclination is to just go to war their first reaction to anything is to go to war and you know everybody has different theories on this but for a nation when all you want to do is compete in cross-nation events and win you should you know obviously fight as hard as you can in those cross-nation events but internally you should work out those differences rather than constantly killing each other but um that's just my opinion So, Nikki, I'm glad you're here. Thanks for joining. Um, World 52, when they merged, it wasn't too long ago. Um, 
it seemed like everything went very smoothly. I mean, you guys are already, you know, a uh, high performing nation. And uh, I, I, I don't really even know much about the other worlds you, you merged with. Can you talk about that? Can you hear me? Yep. Um, so it was 52, 87, and oh boy, what was the other nation? <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, I'm trying to remember. I know I want to. Uh, what was the nation? 68? So 68, 87, and 52. And both 87 leadership and 68 leadership wanted to become, to um, follow the rules of ED1. Yeah. Or the ED1 leadership, which is Sayes and the other people. Um, so that's why, I guess, that's why it was like more of a successful merge because everybody had the same thought process, the same um, plans to work things out and just follow the rules. And I guess that's why um, it, it worked out in the end. Yeah, I mean, well, I, I, I've never heard a peep out of that nation as far as like uh, uh, a bad merge. I mean, it seems like right out the right out of the gates, you guys were so smooth and, and highly competitive. So, sorry, Maddie, go ahead. No, I was just going to ask, you know, in 52, if if it's not, if it wasn't really, I know it's not a failed merge. You guys are sh- extremely competitive, but why do you guys burn twenty four seven? Just out of curiosity. Um, because <laughs> because people fail to bubble, so and we're very competitive, and we don't want to lose a void because somebody forgot to bubble. It better be safe than sorry. So it would be better to just burn them before the enemy does, or burn them beforehand. And then we have those that just want to donate points to the enemy just to make us lose. So that's why we burn them 24-7. If our shield drops or anything happens, we just go for it. Because, like I said, they want to donate the points to the enemy because they hate us. <laughs> yeah, we had one of those. I loved it. It was so much fun. So yeah. how does it work? Yeah, in- I, yeah, I'd like to add to that. Go ahead. How does it work in 52? You've got 81 and then, uh, is it Zoo or Hob. somebody? Hob. And then outside of that, does everybody else just get burned without question? Or how does that work? We still burn Hob and Hob burns us. That's oh, okay. teamwork. I think because <laughs> Hob has a good leadership and they have the same mentality as us. So like if a shield drop from our side, they will go ahead and burn the person. And if their shield drops, we go ahead and burn their person. It's teamwork. And everybody agrees to, you know, they understand like, hey, I understand that you hit me because you don't, we don't, we can't lose or we don't want to lose. And they just, you're, you're okay with it. It's like, if I, if my shield drops in void, um, I'm okay if they burn me. I'm okay with it. I'd rather die by them than die by the enemy, you know? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Go ahead, Johnny. Sorry about that. No, I mean, you know, you're good. Uh, I was essentially going to kind of say the same thing. I mean, I I think one of the reasons, you know, and, and you know, correct me if I'm wrong, um, you know, Kitchy, but, you know, a world that old, I feel like everybody should know. And if you don't, you know, uh, definitely everybody makes mistakes. But, you know, hey, if, especially if it's like a frenzy or a void coming up, you know, and you're not doing this and you're not doing that, like per the nation rules, then – you're going to get smoked, you know? I mean, uh, I, I've i finally started doing that in my nation here just because I'm like, hey, this really sucks. Like, why am I doing this in void? And this is your quote-unquote friend, you know? So <clears throat> uh, I, I, I would think they're doing that 24-7. You know? no, no, and no, I can't I, wait I, till we are, you know? No, I, I, fully, I fully support that, you know, that what Nikki said but I think before you actually get to that stage you have to make sure everyone is following your nation rules you know that there is no exception to your nation rules there is no I I, I think that's and one of the reasons why I, I left and went to 425 is 425 is like that the, the nation rules is you know from lead god down to you know 
whoever it is. It's not, you know, league gods off the table and everyone is, you know, a fair game. It's not like that. So he follows the rules, everyone follows the rules. But if, you know, your number one alliance doesn't do that or your number two doesn't do that, then how would you get the support of the nation if your actual leaders don't actually do it? So I, 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 yeah, I agree with Nikki. I'd rather be burned by someone in my nation to prevent the other nation from winning than, you know, getting burned by someone else. How do you guys, you know, with multiple, we have one big alliance. So our, our smaller alliances are, are significantly weaker and but our number one alliance sets traps. If you have multiple alliances setting traps, how do you communicate that across the board so that you don't get burned just because it's the trap? We use our, you know, like Viber or Discord. Um, anytime any of our four alliances uh, set up a trap and we have uh, the other three set up counterattacks for that trap, then uh, it, it gets posted. And then we disseminate that information throughout. That's how we do it. I don't know how everybody else does yeah, it. Yeah, same here. Um, on Discord, either Hob will be like, hey, there's a city. We're setting a trap. And they send us a location and we just wait for, you know, for things to happen for us to counterattack. Or, yeah, basically Hob is the one that set up base for us. <laughs> and it really, it, it's kind of... you. You can follow the the ebb and flow of battle frenzy or void to where like if the other nation becomes super active and they're hunting, then that's when your guys, your nation kind of gets the cue. It's like, okay, let's set up the trap. Let's get all the other alliances to set up the counter and then, you know, kind of wait to spring that trap. So, you you know, you can kind of feel when... Uh, Void is super active, and when it kind of gets into a, a quiet stage and stuff like that, so typically, oh, yeah. yeah, sure. I can say when we had our void with lumber, it was like in the very, eight, I'll say in the last eight hours. It's like when things, no, the last four hours is when things just went crazy, right, lumber? We did not sleep. Nobody slept, right? We know. I've forgotten already. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> Okay, we're not talking about it then. No, no, it, it, no. That that's exactly right. I mean, it was it was uh, every time you know we attacked, there was somebody there to counter, right? So it's like it's almost like you lose your mind from watching who's doing what, and then oh my God. there was there was a time where burning. I think people were everywhere. Like we moved to two eighty five, they're they're there. We moved to fifty two, they're there. It's like, are you tracking us? Like, oh yeah. <laughs> so I got it. I got to share. I got to share with the yeah. listeners real quick because uh, this this story is kind of epic. So, uh, Lumberg in World Two Eighty Five and Nikki in World Fifty Two, they just had Void, and it was it was huge, right? They're two very successful nations, and I don't know what the point spread was, but um, at the beginning, like the first four stages, it might have been like one point five billion or something. It was big, but um, I heard through the grapevine that Sayez said. You know, no matter what that point spread is, I'm going to keep recruiting until we get even for the kill phase, right? So I think... Well, it was more, he was warning Lumberg, hey, don't recruit too much or I'm going to push. Because technically you guys will be wasting your speeds. Yeah. And he did it just to not to, not to make the point get too big, but just to be enough for us you know, for both sides to look for targets. Yeah. And I mean, w w the point that I was making is that it, it was, it was funny because he just made the playing field even like, right. He was like, okay, if we're going to yeah. do void, we're going to go in, you're not going to go in there with, you know, more than a billion or whatever. I don't know what the point spread was, but what was, what was funny is, well, not funny for Lumberg, but Lum Lumberg sent a, a, uh, an image, I don't know how many minutes were left, maybe 20 minutes or something. And 285 was on top and, you know, everybody was like, wow, that's cool. And, um, I don't know, I guess 52 turned it on and they just, uh, you guys killed a ton and ended up winning that one. So it was, that was probably one of the better void stories I've ever heard. 
But at the same time, because he had to do that, it kind of just shows the the fail, the, the disadvantage of why Commander Points take over what Boyd is. Just because he had to recruit just to make, you know, make the gap smaller. It's just like, how do I say it? It, it determines what what the end result is going to be for Boyd, kind of, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I got it. I'll just yeah. add a little bit. So, you know, I I like Saez. He's, he's one of the smartest, strongest players in the game. And yeah, he, he did kind of give us a heads up that look, you know, um, don't go crazy. Uh, you know, don't try to win this in phase one and four. He wanted a good void. Um, and the point spread was was three billion. So, uh, you know, it was it was pretty, pretty high. And um, I did tell people that, you know, stop, stop recruiting. Like, you know, um, I believe Saez when he says that, let's say, you know, if Maddie said that or Nikki said that, I wouldn't believe him. But, you know, when Saez <laughs> says it, I do believe him. Are, are Usually, you kidding me? I've got a I've got a great one. And and <laughs> no, I, I'm just kidding. So, you know. <laughs> But, you know, it, it wasn't a great void in terms of, you know, big battles. I mean, I think 219 and 208 had had an amazing void. Like, I think they, oh, they point, had the fun void. It's not fair. <laughs> like they had, I don't know, like 100 million, 100 billion points between the two of them. So, you know, that's those are like the high firework void. Ours was intense, like nobody slept, but it was like fighting over, you know, mines and 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 breadcrumbs but it was intense but not not from a score perspective because you know um uh Saez really wanted us to fight ed1 but you know we we know better than that there's there's just it's like david and goliath we weren't gonna we weren't gonna be lured into that but uh it was it was a good good comeback by them well deserved victory wow. i will say one thing ed1 and 52 has to fight two voids at the same time they have to fight there their um leaders anti-nation people from giving away points sooner than we can find them and they have mm-hmm. to find our bubble drops sooner than 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 you know we could find them so it's it's kind of a a it's double rough. war front you know funny enough this void was actually i didn't see much of ss1 bleeding because usually that's our bleeders it was more of our poor little hub <laughs> their bubbles kept dropping and it's like what is going on it was a bad, a bad boy for Hub. It was it. Wow. Yeah, it was mostly Hub. It was like no, I don't know what was going on. It's like what is going on? They never, they never failed this much. That they're really, they're pretty good. It was just this boy. I don't know. I don't know. It was like I don't know what was going on. Yeah, it, it but, happens. Yeah. Wow. Continue. <laughs> yeah, but that was a bad black day as well. That's oh, no. a lot I can yeah. remember. Yeah. You feel yeah. these guys see the style got hit and zeroed? Ooh. Or Japanese bet style? Ooh. Style gun? Oh no, he Ooh. did. He did get what? hit. Oh no. He got zero and hit because he couldn't connect back to the game. The game kept crashing on him. Oh shit. It, that's that's why you don't see no new video of the boys. She said, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hope kind of sad. That, I hope that, he that, makes a boy video. That sucks. Oh, I uh, this past void, I didn't get zeroed, but I got hit for the first time, and it almost broke <sighs> my soul. It's because my game <laughs> crashed right as I went to shield, and um, when I logged back on, I was already like. It was already underway, and I was like, "My God!" <laughs> and then, of course, of course, it was the other nation's strongest Stop. player with an SOS exterminate and slaughter. And I'm like, oh, "Lordy!" <laughs> <laughs> I only lost Sounds 90k. Like I Sounds lost like 90k, news. but it hurt my soul. <laughs> well, we we this, love yeah. This, yeah. We. Oh. Yep. What's wrong, Kitty? No, yeah, we, no, liked I, our, we liked our yeah, void no, because we had. I... Go ahead, Johnny. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Kitchy. No, I was saying, like, you know, kind of agreeing with Matt, like, this last void, uh, I probably for like an hour, hour and a half, I was like, hey, I'm done with the game right now. Like, I couldn't do anything. And I was like, hey, I'm, I'm a target right now. That, that's kind of it. I was like, I'm anything I do is going to be a potential target because. You know, my 
GD phone is not operating correctly and camel sucks. So. <laughs> well, mine happened the next day. It, it was just a standard run of the mill crash. Yeah. I haven't had that many crashes lately, but it's still an occurrence. And I, I don't remember if it was this void, but like the last two voids, the beginning is really, really bad. I mean, you can't resolve any cities. You can't, I mean, nobody can do anything really. And I think I remember one of our vets saying that uh, players were losing millions of troops because of it. So it's, it's almost to the point where in the beginning of Void, you probably don't want to have those huge attacks because you just never know how it's going to work out. Well, in this Void in particular, um, the first 30 minutes were normal lag, which still sucked. But there was about an hour time period, um, you know, about 30, 30 to 45 minutes after reset that it was horrible for everyone. Um, like there were alerts like red alerts like your city was being attacked just randomly popping up you would lose everything on your map screen you'd reset two minutes later it would happen again i mean it was it was really bad yeah i when when the game gets like that i just avoid the game i just bubble yeah. for a whole day and not i just don't play i just yeah, wait till like everything comes down yeah that's why i told everybody just shield up it's not worth losing troops and i, I packed yeah. it up until later that night so it's just not safe to play like that. Sure. Which sucks because, I mean, Void is, uh, it's most people's favorite event, I would say. Yeah. I, not everyone's, but and you only get it one day a month. And if you take out the very first bit of it, that's the most fun part. And it just, it's a bad time for everything to go to shit. Yeah. It's like a lot of people play right at reset. Like yep. most most players just start and go and start fighting, but once the lag hits, it's like, well, I want to keep playing, but you can't really because you're you're getting you're there's a risk of you getting hit back or a risk of you getting kicked out with no bubble and no way for you to come back in, and that's what happened to to Style Gun. He had no bubble, he had no way to go back in, and then he got hit like three times, like completely. He got completely wiped out. Wow. All right, guys. I think we're at the top of the hour. Anything else we wanted to kind of discuss or bring up about failed mergers? Uh, we did have one question in chat a little bit ago. Okay. It says, are most issues fights between larger alliances or just farmers and small alliances that don't want to follow the rules? Uh, and it's our, both. Yeah, in our world, it's it's both. I mean... In the larger alliances, it's all about egos. It's all about um, one alliance wanting to do, you know, execute the rules in a specific way and the other alliance wanting to do it the other way. But then it's also the small farms that, and I hear this a lot, is, you know, players will come in and they'll just say, we have a right to play, blah, 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 blah. And, you know, whatever. And I think Maddie or somebody or everybody really echoes this as is the fact that we have the right to kill you. So, uh, and that's why that we have the nation rules is that everybody, the rules aren't here for us to be tyrants. The rules are here for us to exist peacefully together. So follow the rules. But um, to answer that question in our world, it's both. I mean, the arguments are both. In 52, um, our only issue is SS1. Even though they do manage to, that's why we we have we all have bubbles on because they do manage to zero some of us because they have like thirty one to forty six players, so that's why we we stay in bubble. I would rather have them. It's okay for them to fight us. They have the right to. They have the right to, and we have the right to fight back because we we have zero most of them, but they have managed to zero some of us because people. People don't learn and they don't want to bubble and they forget to bubble and they forget that we have an enemy. But I would rather ha have them to just focus on the, our civil war instead of, oh, let's make them lose. Let's make 52 lose. Yeah, that's you know, pretty, like I would rather pretty, rather have them listen, like if you, I get you hate us, you have the right to zero us, you have the right to fight us, but have some respect, <laughs> you know, like we're all in this together. At least don't don't bleed to the enemy. Let's just put your shield and then just fight us. But 
don't don't do that you know like don't bleed to the enemy because you know you know how expensive boy can be for some people yeah because you know it's it's the part it's part of the game where oh you're having so much fun like spend more for some speed and it gets expensive and then for them to just wanting to lose on purpose it just you know like it, it just it's terrible because like i i can't forgive them <laughs> well that's that. that's the thing is they have no real way to get at you so that is their yeah. one way of retribution or payback is well, like you know I said, what they have managed to zero some of us like that's that's yeah. still a way you know it would be nice for them to to like stop and you know think about it but no they hate us so much that they will just do that they just they just have such so much hate for us Oh well, it, looking at it from that perspective, I I I don't. I think they're just doing that because they don't feel like they belong in Fifty Two anymore. So if they don't feel like they don't belong, then why well, would yeah, they? Well, yeah, but doing this you? makes them even worse. You know, like it's it's not it's not helping the issue. Like you're just making us hate you at the same time and not forgive you and not give you. Let's say you turn around, you turn the leaf around, and you want to make a change when merge comes. We're not gonna forgive you. You know what I mean? Yeah, that that's like if nobody an un- knew what you are. Nobody's gonna accept you unless it's, you get the other trash from the other world. You know? Yeah, mm. that's an unforgivable, you know, thing. Is feeding points to the other nation. There's no coming back from that in my book. We had a player that did that, and that was it. You know, he was he was like our our top, like our third highest player. And he started Oof. doing that. There was just no coming back from it. Yeah. Oh. Matt, like in, uh, in like BP or like uh, in your alliance or something. I, I'm assuming it's like BP. Yeah, BP officers, everything. Um, he he was yeah. a really really strong yeah, respect, player. Well yeah, yeah, outer set him as well too, or at least would have petitioned for it, depending on. His to mine, if you will. I I have a question for um, for Nikki. Um, do you have, when was the last time you guys tried to reconcile things with um, with SS one? <laughs> I don't think we. I don't think we 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 will reach to that point because no matter if I post something in Nation Chat, they're already cussing me out. If I say something nice, they're already cussing me out. I don't know. Or they're saying something to ridicule me or saying some stupid thing. It's like the hate is so deep. There's no way to talk to them. So if I, if I come in and say, oh, I'm going to forgive you for what you have done, they're not going to believe me. And I wouldn't believe them either, you know? It's that bad. So essentially. Maybe you guys need a mediator or something. <laughs> I don't yeah, but, think there's such a thing with these people, you know? <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I totally if, understand. If SS1 and, got on board, would they actually be a good alliance? Like, would they actually give points to... They people? have potential, to be honest. Like, if they yeah. can zero an EV1 player, yeah. they can gather 31 to 46 people. They have the potential. Yeah. But they fail to true. cooperate. They just fail to cooperate. And honestly, I can't say much because I don't know the story. I don't know why they started to be like this. I just wish I knew. Even though it wouldn't matter, it wouldn't change the fact that they do what they do. But I still don't know the core reason why they're like this. Yeah, probably I think people somebody's farm just, died. Or some people just don't want to be told what to do. Yeah. Well. They just think that they're above and beyond nature rules or whatever else. A lot of times, I, I have one seen... last tip, Sorry, and then ahead. I'll shut up. I promise. Um, <laughs> you know, so uh, I've found that if you can find somebody that speaks the language and they get on a, get on a phone call, that that might help. Um, you, you may not want to solve the issues with SS One, but if you're having an issue with um, with an alliance or with the head of another alliance, you know, if you can pick up the phone and call them, as long as you speak the same language or find somebody that can, it, it really does help because, you know, sometimes things do get lost in words nation chat and text and, you know, intentions, you know, don't, don't talk when it's, it's fresh um, um, or it's raw, 
you know, go back uh, after things kind of settle down to, uh, to, to, you know, try that approach. And uh, I that's think it. I'm gonna shut up. It's okay. I think for a nation, if you're about to, if you're, you're trying to purge and you're trying to clean up your world, I think you firstly need to communicate with most leaders. Like I have everybody on board, like, Hey, we need, we need change because let's say you, you, your, your nation is failing because you can't win. You keep losing. It would be better to communicate. I guess the key point is to communicate with the other alliances and mm -hmm. just find a common ground. Like let's, let's do these rules. And if, an, if, let's say, an alliance keeps failing those their rules, well, you burn them. But I guess if you start doing that and you, be, and you burn everybody, because I'm pretty sure you're going to end up burning everybody. But if you see people putting the effort to make a change, then, you know, they can get chances. But sometimes no. people don't change. People don't listen. They just, they, just, they just keep doing the same thing over and over again. And I get, and I, those are the types that you have to, like, kind of burn off the ground like take them away because you can't change to those people so i think um, lum lum has a point like because because the game is um typewritten most of the time with comments the the intention or you don't have the intention behind it because it can be read in so many different ways so yeah maybe nikki should try talking to ss1 no <laughs> <laughs> i think that boat has sailed i don't i don't think that, that trip has sailed if i was if this was kind of fresh if this was like a fresh issue maybe there was potential but now it's kind of like an old wound that keeps that it's like you know when you cut yourself and then it's getting all the that hard hard layer of skin and you scratch it and it's like oh look you're bleeding again and then it gets hard hitting self again it's kind of like that you know like one day they're yeah. fine, the next day they're not, and it's like, uh, it's, I, I, I feel like they no just way. put salt on your wounds. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I just wonder, Lumberg, after what happened with Boyd, do you have plans? Are you going to change some things? Or are you just waiting for the video to come out? <laughs> I, I am waiting for that video to come, come out, so, you know, you should, you should hop on it um, you know but, I, I should, okay you guys need to stop distracting me then <laughs> yeah i took I, a I will break say my mind that, was blowing i i will say this that you know honestly you know i've thought about it long and hard and you know having a heavy-handed approach you know kicking out a bunch of uh, offenders or pointing fingers isn't going to solve our problems right so um most people you know that that tried to do it did it out of effort and so i do believe in second chances but maybe not third um and well, then all things considered we void did... loss, right no it's our second uh, we owe our fir oh. first void loss to 219 um so no, no, uh, no. well with your new merge new merge new merge new merge first void loss right well yeah if you uh, thanks for bringing that up we are zero percent win win rate since the merger thanks nikki uh but yes oh, sorry uh, uh, thanks thanks for bringing that up but uh That's yeah fire. i mean look we went against 52 and 52 is is at the top of the top for for void um so uh, i don't feel so bad um you know did i did i think about like hey let's just find everybody that gave away points and, and try to burn them yes will that do anything absolutely not so we're, we're gonna work through it i thought about kicking out people that didn't show up but you know this void was was difficult right it, it's it was I, I think maddie said it was as normal i don't think it was normal but as of late it does seem normal but the lag was so bad for the first hour and a half right and um like others were saying a lot of your void plans are based on showing up at reset so you know a, a lot of things kind of went by the wayside so um but no we're, we're not we're not scorching earth or anything no I, I, I said the first 30 minutes were normal lag and then it went into the depths of hell <laughs> like like it yeah. went bad yeah i got pretty all right um, guys I, I, well um anybody else want to add anything before i wrap this up Good. no just one well yeah one last little thing sure is is lumber did say that that global conquest is a good way to get everybody on board after a merger um 
you know, and I actually saw that. I now have a new rival who I'm against in 522, and their merger was really crappy. It was completely divided between two alliances. But I think I've scared him to the point where he actually sucked it up and went to his nemesis. And they think that they're going to have a chance now because they're united. Oh, interesting. But he's going to die. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Dark Shadow. <laughs> the way that we've always Dark. seen it is uh, Global Conquest is the best way for all your alliances to work together. And it, and it is a big unifier, especially if you win. But um, for sure, I think. Lumberg was right on that on Global Conquest. Yeah, he, he's just going to be unified in death, and that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> also, Lumberg, I did not mean to put salt in your wound. I'm very sorry. Uh, I, I'm done. All right, guys. <laughs> well, I appreciate everybody's time. Thanks for showing up. Johnny Ringo, thanks for coming in. Um, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks. Thank you.